Welcome to St Helen's Orr. My name is Lynn Clayton. I'm one of the church wardens here at St Helen's and St Barnabas churches in Orr, Hastings. The theme of our service this week is walking with Jesus. As we join the two disciples on the road to Emmaus that first Easter, we're now going to worship with All Hail the Lamb. is walking with Jesus, the words of the service are taken from Iona worship. Iona is a place of pilgrimage and prayer to which many thousands travel each year. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Stay with us for this day. With friend and stranger, with young and old, be among us. Come close to us, that we may come close to you. Forgive us, that we may forgive one another. Renew us, so that where we have failed, we may begin again. Amen. Today's reading is from Luke 24 and is read by Lynn White. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? 
they stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread gave thanks and broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Weren't not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lynn. And now Canon Penny Evan will bring us the sermon. This week we're going to be thinking about the idea of pilgrimage and walking with others, or indeed by yourself, with the express intention of listening to God and learning from Him. There are strong links here with today's reading about the meeting with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Pilgrimage and taking time out to be apart with God has been part of many a Christian's discipline ever since the second century AD. It grew out of a need to step away from everyday life, to live differently from the secular or even the religious world of daily experience. Maybe this resonates with what we might be feeling now. True, our isolation and living differently is being forced on us rather than being a matter of choice. But nonetheless, there is that sense in many of us that we have more time now on our hands and it comes to us as a gift for us to use. For many early Christians, the place to retreat was to the desert. Perhaps following Jesus' example of withdrawal to the Judean desert, as he prepared for his three years of ministry. For him, it was a time of prayer, of seeking the Father, and perhaps most memorably, a time of temptation. The desert became such a popular place to retreat to that a whole movement grew up out of it into the desert fathers and mothers of the fourth century. In fact, it became so popular that serious pilgrims had to find other places to which to retreat. 
There was one chap named Simon Stylites who found the only quiet place for him was on top of a pole in the middle of a river. That must have been pretty uncomfortable. But later pilgrims began to travel to places which had become known as sites of miraculous healings or to so-called thin places where the presence of God was easily felt. This kind of pilgrimage is still popular and there have been some notable uh, but very mixed groups who have made various television series charting their experiences and very often their reconnection with the Lord. In fact, our worship has come today from the Iona community, set up to welcome the many pilgrims who, in normal times, make their way to the island to absorb the atmosphere of peace and holy creativity, of quiet and of worship, for which the island is renowned. But, What is all this to do with the encounter Cleopas and his companion had with Jesus as they walked the seven miles home from Jerusalem? That walk indeed has been the inspiration for many to take time out to walk either by oneself or with someone else and to consciously use the time to listen to what the Lord is saying. Like most of us today, the minds of those walkers were filled with other concerns. For them, it was the puzzle of what had happened to Jesus. For us, there will be other matters at this time, like concerns about the safety of family and friends, or busyness in the workplace for those who are still at work, or how to source supplies of food and medicines when every delivery slot is booked for the foreseeable future. For some, it's how to fill the time when all normal life and activity is no longer possible. It's worth noting that it was in the midst of their concerns that Jesus joined Cleopas on the road. Why didn't they recognize him? Possibly it was because they were not really expecting him, or they were too preoccupied with their own worries. It may have been a deliberate ploy on behalf of Jesus so that he could explain what was in the scriptures concerning himself. What a Bible study that must have been. How those scrolls which they had heard read in the synagogue each Sabbath would have come to life. These were no longer theoretical prophecies but real and very living evidence that God was at work in the world as he had promised. And what's more, they were experiencing it. No wonder their later testimony was, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked to us on the road? Sometimes people today go for Emmaus walks. This simply involves choosing somewhere to walk with a friend or companion and together contemplating a passage of scripture or a biblical thought. Some of the time is spent being quiet together and then later sharing ideas and thoughts which have come. Very often, the experience of walking and listening brings a new awareness of the Lord and what he might be saying to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Not everyone is able to get out on a walk in a park or woods or by the sea, but for those who can, why not turn it into an Emmaus walk? If you can't get out, then a few turns around the garden or even sitting on the balcony can give you space just to be with the Lord. And if you're not sure where to begin, you could try some of the names of God on the list Beryl sent out last week, or go over again the Easter story, or perhaps choose a favourite psalm. If you find yourself being distracted, don't worry, no one said this would ever be easy. 
but try and refocus on the topic and allow the Lord to lead you back to himself. We don't always recognize when the Lord is speaking, just as Cleopas and his companion didn't recognize Jesus until later. But it helps to write down anything that comes to you, and in the process of sharing it, either with your walking companion or later with another, new insights might well come, and we will be enriched as we discover new depths of insight about Jesus, our Saviour, Companion and Lord. And just a final thought from a Christian mystic. He wrote, Reading without meditation is sterile. Meditation without reading is prone to error. Prayer without meditation is lukewarm. Meditation without prayer is barren. But prayer with devotion breeds contemplation. And with that, a new awareness of God. May the Lord bless you as you walk with him this week. Amen. Thank you, Penny. We're now going to worship with the King of Love.
And now the prayers read by Lynn White. Let us pray. O Christ, your cross speaks both to us and for our world. In your dying for us, you accepted the pain and hurt of the whole of creation. The arms of your cross reach out across the broken world in reconciliation. May we recognise your spirit disturbing and challenging us to care for creation and for the poor who most feel the, the effects of its abuse. O Christ, the whole of creation groans. Set us free and make us whole. There is no place that cannot be touched by your resurrection presence, so touch us now. There is strength in your victory. May we know that victory in our present crisis. May we grow in your way of love, which does not despair, but keeps sowing seeds of hope and making signs of wholeness and healing in the lives of those who are victims and those who in so many ways care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Collect for today. Risen Christ, you filled the disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we sing, Jesus is the name we honour. Just name 
on our hearts and on our homes the blessing of God, in our coming and in our going the peace of God, in our life and our believing the love of God, at our end and new beginning the arms of God to welcome us and bring us home. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We look forward to seeing you next week. Keep safe.